Hello and welcome, Pastor John here. I'm welcoming you back to our um, Bible study series here, and we're going through the Bible, and we're going to start today looking at the twelve minor prophets in the Old Testament. The twelve minor um, prophets that is from <clears throat> the prophet Hosea right into uh, the prophet Malachi, and just as a little. Um, just as a note here, um, even though they're called minor, I encourage you not to um, quickly just dismiss them or gloss over them, but revisit them time and time again as you engage God's Word, as you open the Bible and read and reflect, um, <clears throat> because there's a lot uh, in there uh, that you can learn from and it also can encourage you every day. Um, a lot of the challenges these people faced um, um, you know, the prophets um, we deal with today as well, just as well as they did. Uh, maybe not exactly the same way expressed, but so there's a lot of encouragement there um, to encourage you in your walk of faith with the Lord Jesus Christ, right? So something, so today, so just to keep that in mind. So we're going to start with the prophet Hosea today and where the reading is, so please open your Bibles and the reading is Hosea chapter 14 um, verses 4 to 9 Hosea chapter 14 verses 4 to 9 and here we read <clears throat> the Lord says then I will heal you of your faithlessness my love will know no bounds for my anger will be gone forever I will be to Israel like a refreshing dew from heaven. Israel will blossom like the lily. It will send roots deep into the soil like the cedars in Lebanon. Its branches will be spread out like beautiful olive trees, as fragrant as the cedars of Lebanon. My people will again live under my shade. They will flourish like grain and blossom like grapevines. They will be as fragrant, fragrant as the wines of Lebanon. O oh Israel, stay away from idols. I am the one who answers your prayers and cares for you. I am like a tree that is always green. All your fruit comes from me. That those who are wise understand these things. That those with discernment listen carefully. The paths of the Lord are true and right, and righteous people live by walking in them. But in those paths, sinners stumble and fall. God bless the reading of us word. God restores us. God restores us. So here's a little bit of background to what we just read. So we have the prophet Hosea writing here. Um, uh, around about 758 to 722 uh, BC. And this segment concludes the, um, the book of Hosea. So we're at the end of the book. And it's basically a call to repent and to turn, a call to turn away from unrighteousness. Right? It says, when it says in verse, uh, last part, verse 9, uh, but in those paths, sinners stumble and fall. Sinners, you could also say unbelievers, people who are not God-fearing, um, um, those who haven't turned to God but have turned away uh, from God. You could also say sinners is also unbelievers. Um, however, here we see God's, that is Yahweh's, compassion uh, is shown here for the northern kingdom. That's um, uh, Israel, right? Keep in mind that the kingdom, the... the uh, um, uh, the Hebrew kingdom had uh, was broken up into two parts uh, following uh, King Solomon after King Solomon's death uh, under his son. And so we have um, the northern kingdom, this Israel, and then the southern kingdom, which is Judah. All right, so uh, just keep that in mind. So this, this uh, prophecy, uh, um, Hosea is speaking specifically to the northern kingdom that is Israel. So it's basically God's warning and condemnation uh, for the people being unfaithful, 
right? So sinners, they're not turning to God, right? But they're turning away. So it's just something to keep in mind. And um, I just want to note one thing too. I, I didn't say it in the beginning. Eh? Is when you look at the minor prophets as they are arranged, they're not arranged um, in, 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 in an exact chronological order. All right. So uh, just, to, to, just, to, just to let you know that <clears throat> um, they're arranged a little bit differently, but it's not chronological um, in that sense. Um, however, Malachi at the end, the last uh, of the prophets is the last um, prophet indeed uh, in the, who we encounter in the, um, in the Old Testament. So just as a little side note there, so when you're going through the prophets, they're dealing with different times and uh, events. Um, so just be aware of that. All right, so back to here. So uh, this, is a, this passage we just read is, is a very stern warning. It's God's warning and uh, condemnation for the unfaithfulness of the, of the people. So the topic for us is what does it mean uh, when we say God restores us, what does it mean that God restores us? So in verse five, please look along. We look at see verse five. We see Lebanon is mentioned, and over and over again, Lebanon, Lebanon, Lebanon. Why Lebanon? Well, it's it's a geographical area that uh, was you know that flourished even in times of drought, and in there in that region in the area. Um, uh, we sometimes refer to the entire area there as the Fertile Crescent, but um, there was often times of drought, so in other words, not rain, no rain, so it was a big deal. But uh, Lebanon was an area that flourished even when there was no rain and drought, because the way it was located, right? they got they got enough humidity from the from the Mediterranean, and um, so it's just something. So it's basically a symbol. Um, of abundance and restoration. So <clears throat> that's what um, people are called to um, strive for. And in verse 6 is God's promise um, of the restoration of the people and the people flourishing. And in verse 7, well, there's a prerequisite. What is the prerequisite? That's in verse 8. We come across it again and again, but it's important. Um, staying away from idols and that is anything that stands in the way of um, people's relationship with God. So <clears throat> why? God tells us in Hosea 14 verse 8, O Israel, stay away from idols. I am the one who answers your prayers and cares for you. I am like a tree that is always green. All your fruit comes from me. All blaspheming of this word. So nothing comes from idols, only from our Lord God, the one and only God, our Lord Almighty, um, our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, everything else is man-made and um, basically Satan's trick to deceive people um, who, you know, who turns people's hearts away from God to objects and things, idols, that uh, basically uh, you know, serves no purpose, you know, it serves, you know, Satan's evil and demonic purpose, uh, you know, causing people to continue in sin and evil, but it does not serve God. And that's the bottom line. And that's the same today, right? We have to uh, understand that there are idols uh, also surrounding us. Idols can be uh, people struggling after wealth, fortune, fame, um, you know, earthly accolades, uh, I don't know, like people that people are popular or, I don't know, maybe maybe even a YouTube sensation. <laughs> but that doesn't always have to be an idol, but it can be, right? But that's not why we're here. We, we, we teach and preach Christ crucified. That means Jesus as God in the flesh, uh, came as God in the flesh and died in the tomb for our sins. So, um uh, so the goal, the motivation of a heart, is that's really what the bottom line is. Uh, we understand ourselves as serving our Lord Jesus and our Lord Jesus Christ only. All right? So that's what the uh, people were not doing. They were, they were maybe even not aware that um, they were praying to, you know, they were deceived. Their hearts were veiled 
and they were praying to whatever else but not God and God is saying I am the one who answers your prayers and cares for you right so there we have God's lovingness that he God cares for people God cares for all people by the way and um, he calls all of us all people he calls um, both believer and unbeliever to himself unfortunately the Bible tells us too there will be those who will not turn to uh, our Lord Jesus Christ and that's unfortunate because that leads to eternal damnation uh, in other words people you know sending themselves to hell and that's in John uh, the Gospel of John chapter 3 verses 16 to 21 if you want to read that there John chapter 3 16 to 21 Jesus tells us about the verdict so back to here to sum it up here so this is an invitation to repent and to embrace God's promise, promise of restoration. All right, so what does it mean for you and me and all of us that God restores us? What does that mean? It means that God helps us to understand and embrace how God works in the lives of those who follow him. And again, in our, pas our passage provides another answer here. So God helps us to understand and embrace um, how God works, right, in the, in the lives of his followers as Christians. So in verse 9 we read, Let those who are wise understand these things. Let those with discernment listen carefully. The paths of the Lord are true and right. And righteous people live by walking in them. But in those paths, sinners stumble and fall. Amen something to consider and uh, it's also a warning that God judges unfaithfulness God judges at, at, on judgment day when Jesus returns um, <clears throat> God will judge everybody but God um, this is a warning here specifically uh, that God judges unfaithfulness however he promises us healing so um, it is he who is then taking away faithlessness Right. Again, understand that faith is something that Jesus Christ initiates. He does it in and through us. Um, we hear God's word. We hear the good news, the gospel, right? That Jesus Christ came as God in the flesh, atoned for us since died on the cross, um, um, died, was resurrected three days later, and ascended a little while after. And um, that's basically the gospel of the God, good news, that he died for the sins of all. So um, that is our call too. So that promise remains. And so in Hosea 14, verse 4, we read, The Lord says, Then I will heal you of your faithlessness. My love will know no bounds, for my anger will be gone forever. God provides us with his boundless love. Amen. And 1 John 4.16, that's the first letter of John, verse 4.16 we read. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. God bless the reading of his word. This, the, the love here refers to God's divine love, um, which we can share, That's we call the agape love, right, from um, uh, the uh, different languages uh, rendered here but it's a different it's not like human love God's divine love is uh, is you is unique but we can share in that right we can imitate that to a certain extent so um, as believers in Christ right so uh, what is important here is that um, we as we read in the Hosea verse in verse 4 when he says, for my anger will be gone forever, that means God will not be angry with us forever. All right? And so we have here Psalm 103, 8 to 13, where we, we learn more about our Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us, nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. 
for his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. God bless you, Lord, his word. So all of this then is God's promise of provision and restoration. And also for us, as we turn to our Lord Jesus Christ um, and uh, confess to Jesus, tell him, uh, you know, um, ask him to help us in the forgiveness. Again, as I said, understanding that he is the author and finisher of our faith. So he's not going to be angry and he's not going to remember um, our sins. You know, if we have to make amends with other people or if we did some form of whatever injustice or crime uh, as far as human possible um you know um, do what you can to to um, um to 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 face up with that or to make amends wherever possible but sometimes it's not possible for whatever reason and understand that as you confess that too say lord jesus i can't for whatever reason i can't make amends to this person sometimes people may have passed away or somebody was angry or had unforgiveness towards two, as an example, um, then still go to Jesus and confess, and he'll help you um, with that too, uh, just as an example. So understand that truth here, that um, uh, his, his unfailing love is towards those who fear him. And so he, um, as great as the height of the heavens above the earth, he has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west so there's no need that we uh, have to be unnecessarily hard on ourselves at times sometimes we are our own worst uh, critic so to say uh, right and so if god has f uh, forgotten our sins in other words we know because the bible tells us that god has forgotten our sins we've confessed to jesus we repented our sins we're turning away from sin with jesus help he He's forgotten. So why should we remember the sins anymore, right? So ask Jesus to help you with that too. And so all of this is, again, as we said, God's promise of provision and restoration. And this is what Jesus reaffirms uh, in his promise to us directly. Uh, this is one of my favorite verses. I hope you will highlight this verse too. Sometimes I just say, you know, maybe highlight this, those are suggestions that doesn't mean that you have to. Maybe you have some other favorite Bible verses. Highlight them. But this is just one of mine that I've highlighted. And our Lord Jesus himself is uh, telling us here. In John chapter 15, 1 to 5. John chapter 15, uh, 1 to 5. If you want to read along. Jesus says, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. Cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. God bless you, your word. So he's pr Jesus is pruning us, and um, at the same time, that goes back to our theme, um, God is restoring us. Um, we sometimes call that the process of sanctification, this pruning process. And uh, don't don't let anybody ever tell you it's easy or it's painless and it's simple and it's straightforward. It is not. Uh, the pruning process, uh, sanctification, is a journey. It's, um, oh gosh. I mean, it's very different from person to person, right? I don't want to say there's a one size fit, fit all here. It's the most important thing. But this pruning is this becoming more and more Christ-like. And we don't know, the Bible doesn't tell us exactly how all of that works, but we call that the process of the sanctification. It's our hearts um, being, you know, circumcised in that sense as we turn away uh, from sin with Jesus' help and with Jesus' help only. All right, so that's basically it. And 
And that's a verse, Jesus, the true vine, you definitely want to consider. May God bless you and keep you. Amen.